Welcome to Prophetic Praise. It is indeed a pleasure to share the word on the power of praise from the kingdom perspective. Well, if you were not here with us yesterday, uh, please allow me to update you. My name is Professor Mirugia Hernandez, and uh, although I am a professor at the University of the Bahamas, I am also uh, a servant of God at Bahamas Faith Ministries International, where I serve as an interpreter uh, for the Spanish virtual church. In other words, when the service at Bahamas Faith Ministries Inter International is taking place, um, I have the privilege of bringing the word to the Spanish community all over the world, live simultaneously, and that is how God is using me. So for the purpose of this event, God is using me to share with you the word on praise. And it is interesting um, to me to um, receive the invitation to speak on this word because it's not normally what I do. But when I started to meditate on the concept, I realized that while interpreting, um, God uses me to lead listeners into worship and of course during the praise time it's my voice what they hear telling them the words in Spanish and and it's interesting also because the words in Spanish um, in many occasions um, are not exactly the literal meaning of the word that it's been said but is an interpretation that actually sometimes rhymes and um, listeners can sing and praise in Spanish while the service is going on live praising in English is a beautiful um, thing that God, that God does through me and I am so blessed and I'm humbled by the opportunity but today I want to share with you part of the experience because when you are on the other end you you learn you learn and um, sometimes you learn because the Spirit himself gives you impartation and you start sharing with people until someone tells you, hey, this somebody needs to hear this word. As I mentioned before, I had the privilege of um, being a part of many trainings and seminars and summits organized by the International Association of Kingdom Churches. Um, we call it ICANN and uh, ITWALA which is the International Third World Leaders Association. During these events, um, uh, it's, it's beautiful because um, then you get to be a part of Kingdom Training Seminars, Global Leadership Forums, Global Leadership Summits. It's just amazing. And um, as I mentioned before, one of my most touching experiences was being a part of the Leadership Mentorship Program. Um, conducted by the late Dr. Miles Monroe himself, who was directly our mentor. So I hope to be able to share some information um, with you that can help you to find answers to questions that you might be having in your, in your mind because you may be wondering, how come I pray so much and I do not see the answer to my prayers? And that has happened to all of us. But first of all, let's start with um, with the precedent of what's happening in the world today. Uh, as we know, the world is in the midst of a pandemic, and this is a, a situation that is. It, it, it reminds me of 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 the times um, when when um, Moses went before Pharaoh and and asked Pharaoh, um, um, "Listen, I'm coming." here to, to, to tell give you a message of God. God. God is saying, let my people go to worship, right? And, um, you know, there were many plagues. We, we know all, all about that. And there was nothing that a human being could have done to avoid that. So, um, uh, may I suggest that maybe um, at this point we have many pharaohs who are not letting their people go. But then sometimes we have been actually an accomplice to the Pharaoh by not submitting to the will of God and not praising ourselves. So um, it's so much so that we have neglected praise and worship that um, 
to God, that is, that we decided to worship athletes, but now the stadiums are closed. We decided to worship musicians, but now the civic centers are closed. We have decided to worship actors. And what happened to the movie theaters now? They are closed. What happens to money? Oh, we humans love to worship money. What happens to the economy? It's shut down, including the stock market. And speaking about worshiping musicians, sometimes we don't understand the difference between praise and worship, which we will talk about today. But do you recall the late Michael Jackson's concerts? How persons faint and pull their hair? They were frantic. And that is basically what worship is all about. People were worshiping the man. So how can we worship what was created by God and praise what was created by God? However, we are unable to praise our creator. That is food for thought. So it so happened that we have neglected worship to the point that we cannot even go to worship now. I'm supposed to be there in Nigeria with you sharing this word, but I can't. We cannot even travel. And if we travel, we know we are putting our health at risk. So we are forced to stay in a place where if we have to open our eyes. We have to learn to praise, to then enter into the atmosphere of worship. So we could tap into the mind of God so we can start receiving answers. May I suggest that perhaps we need to take this time of isolation from distractions. That is, even though some of us are still distracted with that phone and the movies and Netflix. We love that. But those of us who got the message have been reading, studying. I'm going deeper, deeper, I'm, I'm, I'm more profound into the word. So, as I was saying, may I suggest that we should take this time to, to have a personal revival within. Because if the word says that spirit abides in you, that means you can have your own revival. You have to revive your own spiritual life, your own faith. And then perhaps we should concentrate on the things that really matter Jesus now in 2nd Chronicles 7 14 and I'm going to read from the NIV the word of the Lord says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then so we have to do something first humble ourselves pray seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways oh we love to ask for forgiveness and I, I always tell um, my, my spiritual sons and daughters um, it is okay to say I'm sorry and it's okay to ask for forgiveness but if you think your acts before you conduct them you save yourself the sorry and then you give a positive message instead you cannot go through life apologizing um, because that then means that perhaps you don't know what you're doing and you don't understand how to live according to the word of God so as I was saying the word says we, we must humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, and turn from our wicked ways. Then, now here's the promise. I will hear from heaven. So that means if you didn't do those three things, it doesn't matter how much you pray. God is not hearing from heaven. This is what the Bible is telling me. And not only that God is saying, saying that he will hear from heaven, but also that he will forgive our sins and heal the land the land has not been healed we are still in the midst of the pandemic 
and many nations are going back and having more cases than the first round. Is it because perhaps we have not humbled ourselves enough, pray according to the word of God, seek God's face or sought God's face and turned from our wicked ways? The solution is here. Like I said yesterday, we have been so distracted by the idols. Many countries shut down for days. So the days that the food stores, the banks, and everything is open, everybody's rushing in the street in the mad um, march, if I may say. Um, just looking for their needs because everybody has needs. We are running out of everything. So if that is the case, as I said yesterday, how do we know that the scientists who were supposed to be conducting the test for the COVID-19 vaccine were not so distracted by the surrounding issues that they didn't put in the hours that they needed to make a quick discovery? Too many distractions. But then again, what do you do first? Do you go fend? find food or do you go to work and heal the land or help to heal the land with the knowledge that God gave you so in other words it is important that we understand that we must praise worship repent then pray I hope this information is helpful to you the word says that people per perish due to lack of knowledge and I hear that from Pastor Dave um, you may know him as Dr. Dave Boros he always um, teaches sharing information because it is true that if you do not know information then um, you're, you don't know what to do now if you know what to do and you don't do it then that's on you so let's get some information. I'm going to ask you some questions which I left you with yesterday. Do you believe in God? So let me help you with the answer in case you don't know. If you have acknowledged Jesus as your, your Lord and Savior, that simply means you believe in God. It's the Trinity, the Father, the Son, which is God made man, and the Holy Spirit. That's God, the Spirit. That abides in, in you that is helping you to understand this teaching for example sometimes you know when you receive a, a comment that you are not too pleased with if you just say Holy Spirit give me the words you will get just the right answer my second question to you are you a kingdom citizen I know you are a citizen in your country but your country is on earth and while we Christians, I shouldn't say we Christians, many Christians are always trying to leave earth to go to heaven. I recall many teachings from Dr. Miles Monroe reminding us that um, God created humans to be on earth because he gave us earth in Genesis. And we are always, always trying to escape. But God needs us here to bring his solution. See, we were reconciled with God through Christ so in him we we can do all things possible so if you are a kingdom citizen which means that you understand that your place of origin is your home which is the kingdom of heaven right that is your original country and you just came here you were sent through your mother's womb to planet earth if, if I may say it that way, in a way that you understand, in case you don't understand the concept of kingdom, um, you were sent here on an assignment because you have a purpose, if, in case you don't know it, all of us do. And you were sent to the place where God needs you to make an impact. It doesn't have to be a great impact, it could be a small impact. But your small impact can inspire somebody who will later make a great decision and change the world so you also are a world changer in case you did not know it so that means if you acknowledge that you're a kingdom citizen 
so heaven is your country of origin we are just visiting and we have to take place pre, um, residence in, in, in a place which is the country where you are right then that means your the bible is your constitution that's why i'm speaking to you the words of the bible because once i accepted lord uh god as my lord and savior then and i and i came to a realization that the bible this is an awesome um historic book but it's also the word of god within us so once i understood the meaning of the bible then i realized that's my constitution as a kingdom citizen i realized that i have to live by the principles and concepts in the bible if i want to see what i'm asking god in my life um done Be because it's, it's it's simple you you as a child knew you who you had to behave in a certain manner if you wanted your par your parents favor not only that you also knew that you couldn't commit crimes because the police will lock you up so it's it's very similar but at a spiritual level we have to embrace it now understanding that the bible is your constitution and that that the kingdom is your home country and you are on earth on an assignment then that makes you an ambassador of the kingdom you are an ambassador of the kingdom because you will speak life and you speak the gospel to whomever you encounter you will stay away from from gossip and all of those negative things because these are not times to be breaking people down this is time to 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 help your brother help your sister give him a can of, of tuna give him a can of corned beef give him some flour help somebody with something because the world is in crisis and, and god is counting on you to feed his sheep you don't have to be a pastor to feed, feed god's sheep you can do it right from your home you don't have to have a title to do that and then understanding that now you are a a kingdom messenger therefore an ambassador of the word of christ an ambassador of the kingdom then your church my question is what is your church to you are you one of those believers that sit down waiting for a church to give you answers and fend you and take care of you i hope not because church is where we help is what we support because that is the headquarters the embassy where all of us ambassadors gather once a week twice a week it depends on the schedule in your ministry to help because there are people who really have problems a lot of us are complaining but we have no problems our problem is that we're too spoiled so let's continue talking about um the praise part it's important to understand who you are in the kingdom to understand the concept of praise because if you don't know who you are to god you are his ambassador he, his representative on earth and his beloved child his beloved daughter if you don't understand that then it's difficult for you to become the ambassador that you should be that you you will not be able to to share the message because you don't know who you are if you understand the the, the power that you carry given by your father then you understand not to say certain things and to be more careful in your responses and yesterday i mentioned to you that my 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 spiritual father um pastor alan monroe also brother of late dr miles monroe always tells me find all means possible to share the kingdom message and i'm telling you his words now find all means possible to share the kingdom message he also said to me become the oracle of god let honor and glory be given to our eternal king i'm saying that to you too a lot of us are too busy gossiping about people you should be busy very busy sharing the word of god any news that come to your ears that are not from god you don't have to be rude you just have to be decent oh i'm, I'm so sorry i cannot relate but can we speak about something else i don't like to discuss discuss people nothing will happen to you your father will be so happy to understand that you are on a way to enhance this kingdom now what is praise i consulted several dictionaries but i liked the following meanings to express warm approval 
or admiration. So that is the praise that we give to each other. Oh, I like your suit. Oh, that's a nice dress. Oh, pastor, that's a nice message. That's the praise that we um, actually use with each other as, as humans. But then there's another meaning that I really like, which is the one that relates to this message, which is to express one's respect and gratitude towards a deity, especially in song. So that means we are praising by singing. Do you wonder, have you ever wondered uh, why is this group that sings in, ch in church called the praise and worship team? Why not just the praise team? And um, I want you to know that praise can also be a noun derived from the verbs. The verbs, you know, action word. Uh, could be the expression of the approval or the expression of respect or for gratitude so towards, um, in this case, God. So now we know that when we express to God our gratitude for who He is and we acknowledge Him for who He is in our life, we are praising God. That is praise. Now, how can we praise? Expressing feelings is known as praise. But we can praise God directly. Some of us are able to even speak in heavenly language or tongues or communicate with God in a private way that only He understands us. And of course, um, the Holy Spirit helps you. And um, if you are listening to me, if you're under the sound of my voice and you've never experienced that, then... Um, I'm sure that um, your pastors can lead you to that. Now, we, we could also praise God while we are praying. Uh, some of us like to go into prayer and just ask, I want this, that, that, and that, I'm amen. We have to praise, guys, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, children. In any language you understand it, I'm saying it to you. We have to praise God. We can praise God through music, art, uh, during a, a group worship, uh, telling others about His glory, sharing His message. We can praise Him anywhere, anytime. You're driving, you're thinking of God's greatness, you praise. So let's talk about praise and worship. In Isaiah 25.1, we can see that praise is who God is to you. Isaiah 25 1 is saying, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for imperfect faithfulness. You have done wonderful things. All right? So you are praising God in that way. You are telling God. God who he is to you but what is worship worship is who you are to God in John 4 23 the scripture says yet a time is coming and has now come when the worshipers that is you and I will worship the father in the spirit and in truth for they are the kind of worshipers the father seeks so the, we worship that is who we are to God we praise that is what God is to us so may I suggest that then that worship is more about lordship about sonship rather praise is more about lordship and worship is more about sonship rather i hope you get it right so my thing is if praise is what god is to us that is lordship if worship is what we are to god then that is sonship so a person who yields to the lordship of jesus christ and gives up and, and lives in reverence and obedience 
is praising God. That's a way of praising God. So that is more about the Lordship. So if God is the Lord in your life, then that means you and I, that's for me also, uh, mostly according to the Word of God. Now, if you look at the word sonship, you will find that it is a is considered a condition that is peculiar to Christians and is not shared by by other religions. For example, a Jew I found while reading will consider sonship by way of adoption. So also they will receive it must be received by a special divine grace or according to their practice um and i'm just sharing what i read okay so that means that sonship according to theology emphasizes on on the fact that christians are being adopted as children of god because remember we were originally we have a, we originally lost what we had and we reconciled with god through christ so now we have been adopted through that same um relationship that we encounter with God through Christ so according to the Merriam Webster dictionary sonship is the relationship of a son to a father so that means that when you worship you are enhancing you are telling God I am your son I'm, I, I am your daughter I am adopted by you I am yours in other words Therefore, when we praise, we confess to God and acknowledge that He is Lord over our lives. Lordship. And then when we worship, we are responding to God as acknowledgement that He is our Father and we are His children. Sonship. When you praise, you tell God all the good things He has done for you. When you worship, you yield. Many times we make reverence, we bow as we worship. So, according to Isaiah 25, 1, as I said before, praise is just who God is. And according to John 4, 24, worship is who we are to God. Okay? I hope I'm helping with this um, teaching. True praise from the kingdom perspective requires worship. Why should you work? What should you praise? Because it reminds us that God is almighty. It also reminds us that we exist only because of his love and it humbles us. We need to be humble, my brothers and sisters. It helps us to realize that without God, we are nothing. Praise in the Bible is normally presented as a highly spirited, joyful, and uninhibited expression to God. Because at the end of the day, we have to realize that God requires all creation to praise Him. So this is praise from the kingdom perspective. Worship, on the other hand, goes deeper than praise. Because remember, worship is who you are to God. Now is when the connection is established. Now is when you yield yourself, your spirit to, to God. And you allow the spirit that, that abides within you to take over and leads you to God deeper in that space that is sacred and that is only yours to worship the Father. It's personal. It doesn't matter how many persons are around. That is personal to you and God. Worship comes from the spirit and it is your spiritual response to your father. It is often said that worship is an attitude of a state of the heart. So for true believers, it's almost impossible to separate praise and worship because the minute we start praising God, we enter into an atmosphere of worship. We just yield. When you really understand how to tap into the spiritual realm when God talks to you and you listen. So that's why we have a praise and worship team. I don't recall seeing a 
they would praise and worship thing only singing and saying stiff they always enter into an atmosphere of worship it is impossible to praise God and after realizing who he is it's impossible not to yield to his greatness and his power generally persons with gift in musical instruments and including their voice praise him but you don't have to sing good you can praise him with your bad voice go in the shower to get the cues that you need just praise and worship and sing and tell God who he is and yield to his presence so remember worship is completely different from praise but praise can be a part of worship praise derived from recognizing the act of God worship comes from the core of who the worshipers are in God and worship is not a function of God it's not an act of God it's rather the spiritual response of a person who recognizes the act of God why should we praise Psalms 150 and 6 verse 6 let everything that has breath praise the Lord because the Bible commands it where should you praise everywhere yet you are enthroned as the Holy One you are the one Israel praises Psalm 22 verse 3 Praise is where God lives. And because praise is where God lives, in Psalm 145, verse 1, the psalmist is saying, I will exalt you, my God the King, exalt us in praise. I will praise your name forever and ever. And verse 2 is saying, Every day I will praise you and exalt us in worship. Your name forever and ever. So exalt us in praise, E X A L T, and exalt us in worship, E X T O L. So may I suggest that um, I may I will exalt you and exalt you extol you. I'm sorry, my my accent gets in there sometimes. It's saying that we are going to praise and worship God, in other words. In the Hebrew Bible, hallelujah is actually a two-word phrase. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, how, however, hallelujah, which is what we know as the highest praise, means more than simply just praise God. Is also the word Hallel, which means in Hebrew, joyous praise in song. So Hallel, Buja, meaning that we are going to praise God in joyous praise and in songs and exalt Him and extol, and, and extol Him and just yield to Him. What are the benefits of praise and worship? Praise facilitates access to God. In Psalm 104, the scripture says enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise it even tells us how we must enter when you go into the presence of a king you just don't walk through the door you have to be announced you know there's a process back in the days if the king didn't ex extend his scepter you know um, that was the end of the person's life um, so praise facilitates access to God you enter his gates in thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and that gives you access to the king. Well, I hope to have been able to help you with this topic. Um, let's remember that it's the blood of Jesus that paves the way for forgiveness from sin. And the relationship with God um, is what you need to to persevere to succeed in your life and if you want to know more about this um, you can go to Hebrews 10 19 that explain, explain explains more about it from the kingdom's perspective and that being said um, please let's understand that our perpetual praise provides a clear unhindered and unhindered passage to God it gives us access to God now we have to know that that God is our Lord 
until we recognize his lordship over us and our sonship to him it's, it's difficult to give him this um, prevalence importance that he um, that he should have over our lives therefore if, if you understand that God is your creator you, you must yield you must yield you have to give thanks you have to praise his name because his love endures forever you have to go into that deep profound space where you can worship God and in that moment when you are completely in, submitted to the Spirit of God God himself will give you the things that you have to pray for all the solutions are on earth the money that is on earth has not run away uh, as I mentioned to you my spiritual father has always said that the money is still here and in the hands of those who still had who had it we, we need to be creative we need to ask God to give us the the wisdom we need to ask for wisdom to understand what to pray for and to tap into the realm where we get the answers that we're looking for because you are gifted you have answers so once you praise and worship and you pray in the way in which the Bible prescribes after understanding that you are an ambassador of the kingdom and after understanding that the kingdom of heaven is the place where you belong you will see answers now I hope you are able to understand how to get into that atmosphere I hope that the Lord continues to bless you and keep you and that his face shine upon you and um, I'd like to say a prayer I'm not sure that um, if in this recording um, there was a portion with a prayer before starting with a word I'm not sure if um, the program has sufficient time to, to share it but I would like to pray for you Heavenly Father we ask you to bless everybody under the sound of my voice, Heavenly Lord. I thank you for giving me the courage to share this word and for giving me the wisdom and understanding that you have required of me. Heavenly Lord, I ask those persons who have been looking for answers, seeking you. I, I ask you that you look at them differently, that you, you give them the way and the and the prescription in which you want them to come to you I ask you Heavenly Lord to forgive us all if we have not been walking according to your path your path rather Heavenly Lord I ask you to heal the land I ask you to heal those who are listening to me who are looking for a miracle coming from you yes we understand that we like miracles we don't like to work but we are committed to praise you and worship you as an act of faith to receive that which we are asking of you I ask you father in the name of Jesus to bless the goodness and mercy teaching ministry and take prophetic praise with your hand to become the praise event that it should be because we need to praise you this is going to be an event where the nations will gather to praise you and if that is what you you require of us heavenly lord i ask you in the name of jesus to help us to understand how to praise you how to worship you how to yield to you give us the word to pray to you remind us of the scriptures that speak of you concerning your promise to us heavenly father we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. You are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord, you are God, you are Lord. We worship you, Father, we worship you, we worship you, mighty God. Until next time, until next time, may you abide in the praise, and the power of praise from the kingdom perspective. God bless you. My name is Professor Miru Hernandez, and I worship at the Hamas Faith Ministries International. Be blessed.